this video will save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars as I share 30 things that I won't be buying for baby number five. And if all of my prior baby registry mistakes can be helpful to you, they will all be worth it. Things that maybe you can cross off your list and reallocate that money to the things you really need, things that are gonna be heavy hitters, that are gonna be worth your money in the long run. Some of these items you may have already nixed from your list, but some of these might be a bit more controversial, and some of these you may have never thought of even eliminating from your list because we've been so conditioned or marketed to that we have to have these things. But do we? I'm gonna challenge some of those today, so stick with me. And at the very end, we are gonna talk about what to do when we receive things that we don't love and how we can kind of navigate those conversations with people to kind of communicate what we do like and what we do prefer without coming off as ungrateful or bougie. It's been challenging for me too, but after five babies, you know, I'm having to really learn how to flex that muscle. So hey, my name is Lana and this is Girl Teach Me. This whole channel is about helping you become the woman you are meant to be. And I know you're gonna find really helpful resources for motherhood here at girlteachme.com and over on Instagram. In fact, I made a whole pregnancy survival guide for you. It goes through each trimester, talks about the different woes, the different things that we might have happening to us in those trimesters how to navigate that, some different remedies for those different ail ailments that we may have in those trimesters. Also, things that I've really loved for baby and for my pregnancy are listed in that guide as well. So make sure you go grab it. 29 pages, y'all. It's so long, but it's all that I wish I knew when I was first pregnant. So make sure you go grab that download below. So I'm so pumped to be doing this video in collaboration with Margaret Matheny. She's one of my favorite people. I'm sure you're obsessed with her channel as I am. And she always makes me better when I watch her videos. She encourages me to be so intentional with what I bring in my home, just intentional with my life. And so her video is the things that she's not buying for her third baby. And while there might be some overlap, I'm sure that she is bringing some hot takes on some things that she will not be buying and I'm sure I will learn something from that video as well. So make sure you go watch that video after this one. So the first one is a diaper bag. I had a diaper bag for my first baby and honestly it was clunky and it just kind of went out of style fast. And so what I found is just having like a simple leather purse that I carry extra diapers, extra wipes, a change of clothes for the baby and a simple muslin just blanket. It's just all I need and it makes things so much easier to get out the door. The second one is burp cloths. Honestly, like I said, I like to use a muslin blanket. This is one of them that I pulled out and it's funny because my two year old was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> but um, it's just nice and thin like you see and you can use it as a swaddle, but also I just usually just throw it over my shoulder and use it as a burp cloth. Blah, blah, blah and use it as a burp cloth as well. So I got a lot of mileage out of these. You can get too many of them, so I only like to keep like four to five, and they get softer as you wash them, so I've really enjoyed these. The third one is a diaper warmer. Y'all, I am not trying to make my kids high maintenance from the get-go. Like, I am not gonna be able to get to that perfectly warm wipe every single time I need to change that baby's diaper. They may not love it at first, but they will certainly get used to a cold wipe. The fourth one is clothes with tons of patterns. I really prefer something simple. So here's some examples. Like this one is a pattern, but very, very minimal, okay? But see how it also goes with this little one or this one. They're all kind of like in the same color scheme. I really love that. Something minimal like this. They look so much better in the pictures that you take but also it's just visually less stimulating for me and it helps to, you know, like a little bonnet like this, they all kind of go together. So I don't even put clothes on my baby registry. I just try to buy a couple of pieces I really, really love that are almost gonna be like a keepsake and that helps a ton. I just feel like some of the clothes I've received are probably not my favorite and they're, you know, maybe have itchy fabric. So it's just nice to just not even put them on the baby registry and pick out the ones I want. The fifth one is a lot of newborn, a lot of zero to three, and a lot of three to six months. Y'all, they fly through these clothes. And honestly, even if you don't put baby clothes on your baby registry, people will probably get you those sizes. That's like the bulk of what people generally give you. So I invested my money a little bit more six months plus because once they hit that six month mark, they can wear those clothes for almost six months, like six to 12 is, is like the next category up. So if I was gonna invest in some clothes, I'd probably invest a little bit more in those or clothes that can go like zero to six 
and then six to 12 because there's definitely some out there like that. Um, especially if they don't have footies, they can kind of, they can kind of grow with them. So that's just something to consider. Okay. I don't have time with outfits with a lot of buttons. I love some zippers. Now it's okay if like they have a couple of buttons at the bottom, but y'all in the middle of the night, I don't want to be doing buttons. You know what I mean? Number seven, specific baby laundry, not buying it. Number one, I don't want any fragrance on my baby. I want to smell my baby because babies smell divine. And so what I do instead is I just use branch basics. It's safe for the whole family. And one myth of laundry detergent is that the soap washes out in the washing machine. Not true. Some soap residue is left on your clothes and then those clothes are put on your skin. And then that soap is sitting on your skin and your skin is an organ and it's absorbing all of that. So fragrance is really not good for anybody's hormones, but especially for your little baby. Here are some brands right here that I've done some research on and that are safe. I have really truthfully only used, I think maybe I've used Molly Suds one time, but I use Branch Basics and so I really haven't had to use the other ones because I've been pretty happy with it. I'll leave a link and a code for a discount on that and it's nice because you can make other minimal cleaning products with Branch Basics as well. Number eight, super dressy clothes. Honestly, I like to have like just one, maybe two little dressy outfits. These are commonly bought by people because they're oh so cute at the store but it's just really not practical. Like I try to keep one, you know, really nice dressy item for my big kids for when we need to go somewhere extra special. But honestly, we're home, I homeschool all the time. So why do we need the dressy stuff? Number nine, specific baby towels. Y'all, I think they're the worst towels in the world. They don't absorb anything, at least the ones that I've had. So just using regular towels for baby. Number 10, baby robes, they're cute and not practical. Okay, before I share the next 20, I wanna share a mindset shift that has been absolutely key for me and I think it'll be really, really helpful for you when it comes to what you're purchasing. I want you to think back to when you set up your kitchen. So maybe that's when you had your wedding registry or something like that and you didn't really know what to buy, you didn't really know what to put on your wedding registry because you had never really set up a kitchen before. It's very, very similar with a baby registry. This is like uncharted territory for you, but what I want you to think about is tools. Like in the kitchen, the things that you use the most often, the things that you get the most function out of, the things that you can even buy used, think about them like tools. And I'm gonna circle back to baby items. I really am, but hang with me here. You know, it's the difference between your cast iron skillets and the gimmicky avocado slicer, when really after a while you realized you could just cut the avocado with a knife and the knife is multifunction. So taking that same mindset to motherhood, like what can I use that's multifunction? What can I use that I'm gonna get the most bang for my buck in the long run? What can I even buy used or borrow? Like think about these things less as items that are gonna make me this perfect mom or items that are gonna you know, signal to people what kind of my mom I am and more of like tools, tools to get the job done. All right, so back to it, 11 nursery decor. Here's what I think. Just consider maybe making the room the way you want it to be. The baby won't really remember. You're the one that's gonna be in there. So it doesn't even have to be babyish. Just making it beautiful. Maybe a room that the baby can enjoy for the next five years. You may even be putting another baby in there of a different gender and you know, a couple of years. So just thinking through that, unless you know, all of that is just your jam. I feel like baby-ish decor is pretty unnecessary. This time around, I won't even have a nursery. Baby's gonna be like over there with me and the baby will join either the girls or the boys depending on what I'm having. So yeah, baby number five's not getting a nursery. <laughs> number 12, specific baby furniture. So here's some things I've done in the past is I've bought a waist level dresser, painted it, my style changed the knobs, and then I added changing pad and baskets on top for diapers and things like that. I even have been given cribs or bought used cribs and I've painted them to match the room or just that, so that I like them better. And I painted them with non-toxic paint. Um, the kids scratched it off eventually, but you know, it got, it got the job done and I didn't have to go buy like a thousand dollar crib. And so another idea for that is just to make sure when you get a crib that the side of it can come off and it can easily become a toddler bed. Again, multifunction. Number 13, a baby swing. Now hear me, I actually really like a baby swing and some people will say no to the baby swing. Here's why I like it, but why I won't be buying it. I like it because it's the fourth trimester, those first 12 weeks, like after you have the baby in the rocking swaying of the swing replicates the womb and it's very soothing to baby. 
but a lot of people say just baby wear instead. And I agree, I love having baby close to me. Also, it gets to my back after a little while. And I kind of get touched out, especially having, you know, four other kids. I just, I hit my touch threshold. And so putting the baby in the baby swing is really, really handy. I was gifted a Mama Roo by a client and I really did enjoy it. It was fine. I don't think it was worth $400 or $300, whatever it is. And I actually gave it away to a friend not knowing I would have another baby. So I will be borrowing one, I'm sure, because you really only use it for about four months. Okay. Here's a controversial one. Number 14, a baby monitor. I'm not gonna be using a baby monitor. Let me tell you why. My house is pretty, like all the rooms are pretty close together. And honestly, the baby will be with me most of the time. The other thing is I felt like when I had the baby monitor by my bed, it just kind of kept me on high alert. I feel like I'm always on and I'm always listening to like every sound. And so it just has been better for my sanity to not have a baby monitor. You know, if the baby is in the crib in another room, I'm like listening, but to just like hover over the baby monitor just wasn't good for my sanity. But if it's fine for yours, I just would consider getting one with like a secure connection where other people can't like break the connection and be looking at your baby. It's kind of scary. And one with low EMF. Um, you can look up more on that. I think Margaret may have a video where she talks a little bit more about a baby monitor with low EMF. So, so those are just considerations if you do think you're gonna get a baby monitor. Number 15, baby shoes and socks, don't buy them. What I do instead, if it's a little girl, I get some little tights like this. I think it's Little Stocking Co. that these are from, let me check. Yeah, Little Stocking Co. And then I'll add some moccasins over the top. Adelisa has literally precious little shoes that can go over tights that are really basic and will go with a lot of things. I'll leave a link and a discount code below. But another thing I do is I just, a lot of footy pajamas, and in the summer, y'all, let those baby feet out. They're so cute. They don't need socks then anyways. And so, yeah, it's just another thing to keep up with. And it's a, a, a I feel like a temptation, especially for little girls to have lots of cutesy little shoes, but y'all, it's it gets cluttery fast, I'm telling you. Number 16, no scratch mittens, those little mittens they put on babies. Babies need their hands. That's how they communicate. That is... You know, they've had their hands to themselves in the wombs, and then why would we take their hands away? Because they're scratching themselves. Just file down their nails. You don't even have to clip them. Just file them down, but let them have their hands because that's how they signal to you what they're feeling when they're hungry, stuff like that. 17 tons of baby blankets. This is a really common baby registry gift that you might give, be given, but... I just keep, you know, like this one's so pretty and it's nice fabric. I just kept a couple that were really beautiful, good quality. And I'll tell you at the end of the video what I did with some of the baby blankets that were new and beautiful, but honestly, I didn't need. Number 18, bibs. Honestly, you know, I've had one projectile spit upper, but most of the time you can just throw that, you can just throw that blanket, like I said, over your shoulder, wipe up the spit up with the blanket, but bibs are kind of unnecessary i mean i think if you're bottle feeding they're probably going to spit up more because it's easier to overfill a baby with a bottle and sometimes that's why they will spit up so much is because they're being overfilled that's happened to me many many times the one baby that i had that was a projectile spit upper he, there was a flap in his throat that hadn't completely closed and once it closed he stopped just projectile vomiting spitting up all over the place so if that happens to you um, more than likely something's not really really wrong but bibs were just generally unnecessary i'll talk a little bit more in the food section i'm going to talk a little bit more about food and that's when i do get some bibs but i get some pretty strategic bibs for that 19 shopping cart covers i just wear the baby while we're in the store baby oil baby powder baby cream babies skin really does not need a lot and honestly putting a lot of stuff on their skin can disrupt the microbiome of their skin and just be really irritating and babies don't even need a lot of soap they certainly don't need fragrance a lot of times when i would bathe the baby i would just use warm water in a rag but you know every couple of times i will use a little bit of baby wash so tubes and co sent me this baby wash i'm going to try it out and let you know what i think their baby balm i have been using their baby balm and honestly i've been rubbing this tallow on my my bump and it's really helping me to not get stretch marks i put it on my boobs too because they grow in my butt 
but I really am enjoying this tallow. Tallow just absorbs really nicely into the skin, so that could be an option too. If you really feel like the baby just needs a little bit of moisturizing or you know, just is having some issues down there, baby cream from Tubes & Co. I really, really trust their stuff. But I have a discount code and link down below for you on that too. A bouncer, a walker, activity center, all of that. They're bulky, they get in the way. If you really need one, just borrow one, get a used one and sell it back for what you paid for it. But honestly, sitting in something like a seat very, very long, unless it's really ergonomic, is not gonna be good for their hips. I learned this while my husband was getting his doctorate in physical therapy while we had our first baby. He learned about hip dysplasia and how when babies sit for a long time, it can really cause hip dysplasia. And so that's something to think about. The other thing is that walkers are not good at all for babies' development of their legs. It can cause bowed legs. There's too much pressure on a developing leg. So yeah, walkers are just a no-go anyways. 22 baby crib bumpers. They're not even safe and I don't even use baby bedding. I put them in the crib with no bedding. I use Docatot, but I don't put them in there with a blanket. 23 is a controversial one. I do not use pacifiers. This is why. When I took my first breastfeeding class before my first baby, she just cautioned me to wait a couple of weeks on a pacifier for a couple of reasons. One, it can just interfere with breastfeeding and the latch, it can also cause nipple confusion. And the third thing is it can mess with your milk supply. And so I just stayed away from it for the first six weeks. And then I was like, I don't really even need it. I didn't want to have a crutch that the baby needed to go to sleep. And so I didn't use one for my first. There was also in the back of my mind when I had babysat there, I, there was a couple of kids that were like three to five still using a pacifier. And I was like, I don't want, I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that. So for that reason, I just opted out and I haven't used them for four of my other kids. Now I will say that two of my kids have been thumb suckers. And so maybe I'm going to have to deal with orthodontia or some speech issues from that. So we all just choose our pain and it just felt good for me for them to be able to self soothe. So disclaimer there may not have been the perfect decision, but I won't be buying pacifiers. Teething gel, they can have a lot of chemicals. I've also used Hyman's teething tablets that just dissolve in their mouth, and that seemed to help, but this time I'm gonna try this earthly, but this time I'm gonna try this earthly teething tamer. It seems interesting and it's been well recommended, so I'm gonna give that one a try this go around. Okay, the 25th one is the Diaper Genie, y'all the diaper genie. It stinks. The liners are expensive to buy. I don't even think it's effective. And when you go to change that thing, you will have never smelled such an awful smell in your life. So what I do instead is honestly, when they're breastfed at the first six months, exclusively breastfed poop does not really smell that bad. I just stick it in the trash can. If you mix formula in there, the poop will stink. But then once you start feeding the baby regular food, they're not gonna poop a million times a day. So what I do is just tie it in a little plastic grocery sack and set it outside. Um, and then I throw it in the trash can. So that's a good system for me. I know it can be tricky when you live in an apartment and things like that. Maybe they've invented something better than the diaper genie at this point. You can drop it down in the comments if you have a suggestion for that, but not doing diaper genie. Before I jump into the last five, two of which are pretty controversial and I think you'll wanna hear, Think about this quote, everything you own owns a piece of you. And so, you know, whatever you're buying, you're going to have to earn the money, spend it. You're going to think about it. You're going to long for it. You're going to buy accessories for it and have to take care of it. And so, you know, just being super wise with what you let come into your home and, you know, even what you choose to get out of your home and declutter can really just help you make smart decisions when you're making your baby registry. Like, do I want to take care of this? Do I want to buy all the accoutrements and accessories for this thing? Um, do I really, really need it? I know there's a huge temptation to virtue signal to people that I am a crunchy mom or I am a really on top of it organized mom or whatever you want to display to other people or signal to other people. I think people use things for this. I'm a trendy mom. I'm a, you know, whatever. Y'all, it's just things. It's not who we really are as moms. So we'll, so we'll jump in the next five, but it's just something to think about. Everything you own owns a piece of you. And I know that we don't want to spend our time just managing stuff. We've got better things to do. 26, baby toys. Honestly, they don't really need baby toys. They love to just look around. They love for you to read to them, talk to them, for you to carry them around and for them just to see the world. If they have siblings, they love siblings to talk to them. And even just like big kids, sibling toys, as long as they're not Legos and stuff, 
I just felt like it added to the clutter. 27, a bath thermometer. I really can't think of anything more useless. Just use your hand. If it's hot to you, it's hot to baby. And even just go like a step down and like warm. 28, car seat, strap, covers, unnecessary as well. Okay, so 29, a little bit controversial. Bottles, bottle accessories, bottle warmers. Here's the thing. When I had my first, I did have to work. And now that I am home exclusively, I breastfeed exclusively because it doesn't actually come to be a break to let somebody else feed the baby because then I still have to pump. And honestly, I'm not very disciplined. I never have been when it came to pumping. It ended up just causing more issues because if I didn't pump at the same time every day, I would back up and get lumps. And so it's just really not worth it to me. There's so many accessories that come with bottles and it causes a lot of kitchen clutter. So to me, it just wasn't worth it and to just go all in on breastfeeding. And number 30, an electric pump. I have had electric pumps. They are fine, but honestly, I don't even care to have a stash of breast milk in the freezer. That may seem irresponsible to you, but the Haka, I think I'm saying that right, you can attach that to the other boob while you're breastfeeding on this one. And my friend has been using it and she's like, Lana, I'm storing up so much just from what is dripping from the other boob in the suction. So that's another way to store up breast milk without having to pump. But honestly, I use a hand pump that's, I've, I've given away the electric pumps because I use the hand pump and it is helpful to have a hand pump because I have been known to back up a little bit and get some lumps and it just really helps to work it out to have a hand pump. And when I go to weddings and things like that, where I have to pump a little bit just so that I'm not overfilling and getting really tight in my chest, I take the hand pump and just do it in the bathroom. So that's really worked for me and it's way less expensive. But if you're gonna have to pump all the time, of course you need an electric pump. But if you're gonna be home all the time exclusively breastfeeding, exclusively breastfeeding, I don't know. I'm not sure you need to spend a couple hundred dollars um, to get an electric pump. And the bonus one that I wanna share is a baby food maker, anything like that. What we have done is really just squish up the food that we're eating and exposing baby to what we're eating. You know, if we're trying to eat healthy, so I think it'll be healthy for the baby. You know, at first it might be like a squished up avocado or something, but generally I try not to make separate food for the kids, you know, from the adults. I'm not running a diner. I want the kids to eat with us and for us to share the same palate. And so my kids are really, really good eaters. And I think that's why it's because I've always just squished up our table food for the baby and so the baby can be with us and eat what we're eating. So let's talk about what to do when we receive things that we don't love. This may this may sound terrible, but I kept a specific basket of things I could return if I could return it. If I couldn't return it and it was new, what I did was I rehomed it. I rehomed it with a pregnancy resource center. They host baby showers for new mamas and I really felt like it was more important for me to give that item that was beautiful and new, but I just didn't need it to the Pregnancy Resource Center. I took baskets and baskets one time, and that was so cool for me because I knew those mamas really needed it and would appreciate it, but for me to just put an outfit on the baby to take the tag off so I won't feel guilty and let them wear it one time, I felt like that just wasn't a really good use of that item. So unless I knew I was gonna wear it and wear it, I just rehomed it because I was just more set for me to take care of. This was really common for outfits and baby blankets and even baby bath supplies that I just didn't need. Those were easy things to rehome to the Pregnancy Resource Center. But when it comes to your baby showers and you know when people are asking you what you need, just be honest. Like, hey, would you consider you know pulling your money for this stroller I would really want or this car seat I really want. Like those big ticket items that can be hard to spring for yourself. Like it's just asking maybe one part of your family to come together on a gift or two. And then when you have another baby shower, hey, can you guys pull in for this gift? And even if they can't purchase the whole thing, but they give you like a couple hundred dollars towards it, it can be really, really helpful. Instead of a bunch of trinkety items, you really didn't need and kind of waste other people's money. But at the end of the day, they're gonna give you the gift that they wanna give you, because after all, it is a gift. And of course you need to be thankful, but that doesn't mean you have to let it come into your home. This is when I think a lot of the kid clutter begins and we can feel like a victim to the clutter because we're like, well, people gave me this, so I have to keep it. Not true. You do not have to keep a thing in your house. You don't have to keep a thing in rotation. You don't have to use anything that you don't want to in your home. You are the gatekeeper for your home. And so don't be a victim. You are in charge. And if it doesn't fit for you and your lifestyle and even your style sometimes, 
it's okay to rehome it. It really is, and it's okay to say no thank you if somebody's asking. It's a tough muscle to flex. Um, I think clarity is kindness, as Brene Brown says, and it might hurt feelings. But I think if you're doing it from a gentle heart, I think it keeps us, you know, from coming off bougie. If we can just say, hey, this is what I need. And then the bougier items, the more your style, maybe just consider getting that yourself. Remember, this is a huge market for businesses. They're going to market to you that this is going to make you a better mom. This is going to make you a certain kind of mom. You know, it's really, really not true. We want to give the best we can as a mother, but honestly, this temptation goes on and on and on when they're five, when they're 10, whose babies or whose kids are in the best activities, whose kids wear the best clothes or have the best toys, who takes the best vacations. Like it goes on and on and on. This never stops. So you can just opt out right now and decide that what's going to make you a really good mom is your intentionality, your care how you show up and love on your baby, that's what's gonna make you a good mom. It's not gonna be all the baby accessories that you buy. And what I want you to feel and know from this video is that a lot of people put a lot of stock into what they're buying for their baby registry and they don't spend enough time thinking about the mom they wanna be, the birth they wanna have, how to learn how to breastfeed and things like that. They're thinking about a lot of stuff instead of who we are becoming in the process. And so again, that's why I go pick up my pregnancy survival guide. I talk a little bit about that in the pregnancy survival guide on just preparing your heart and your mind for becoming a mom and for pregnancy and breastfeeding. I talk about that all in the pregnancy survival guide. And also I have a course where I help Christian women prepare for natural labor. If you've had it in the back of your mind that you want to go natural, but you're just not sure if you can, I think this course is for you because I'm talking a lot about the mindset, I'm talking a lot about the heart and how to tie your faith into preparing for labor, getting your heart and mind ready. And I've had four babies naturally, so I put all the things that I've learned into this course to give you the best shot possible of going natural. And of course, go check out Margaret's video. I have that listed below. The things that she's not buying for her third baby, like I said, there may be some overlap, but y'all, I can't wait to see her video. I know I'm gonna learn some things from it, so go check that out next, and I'll see you next week. From generation to generation, passed down through every age, is a story of a savior whose love will never change. All creation will bow before him.